questions. So I'll go ahead and record this. This will be sent to um, your district admin after this session, along with the slide deck, if you want to refresh yourself after the session, since we will be covering a lot here. So we know that students are able to more fully express their learning as well as reflect on and deepen their understanding when they have the right tools. And Seesaw really brings together that high quality instruction, actionable learning insights, and student support in one place. So teachers have the tools they need to meet students where they are. Students have the tools they need to be deeply engaged in learning and teachers have visibility into the student's understanding. And then that last part is that families have the tools they need to support their child to their full potential. So today our objective is to learn to use the most recent Seesaw improvements to create meaningful learning experiences. Here are our learning outcomes for today. So you will learn how to use present to class to bring whole class instruction to life. You'll learn about our new collections in our Seesaw library that will support student learning. You'll learn how to differentiate your instruction with student groups. You will learn how to quickly gauge student understanding with formative assessments. And then you will also learn about two new updates to messages in Seesaw. So Elizabeth, if this is what was covered in Ambassador, apologies. There might be some new things, not sure. Um, all right, well, let's jump right in. So first, let's learn about present to class. This feature really allows teachers to bring high quality whole class instruction to life through Seesaw's multimodal tools like video, interactive text, teacher modeling, and more. So whether it's morning meeting, a daily warm-up, or maybe even calendar math, teachers can use this present to class feature to model how to complete an activity on their interactive whiteboard or if they have a connected projector. And then as you as the teacher model, you can highlight key vocabulary, demonstrate solving a problem, emphasize text features, or focus on any skill your whole class is learning about. So there are hundreds of lessons in the Seesaw library that start with an instructional video that you can use to introduce a new concept or build background knowledge for the whole class. And then next, you can use the present to class to project the discussion questions that follow that instructional video. I'll go in and, and show some of these, an example of what some of these look like. So to use the present to class, you'll simply tap present to class on any activity in Seesaw, including the ones you create yourself. And you'll project that lesson um, and you can use any of the Seesaw tools with your entire class. So the, let me jump in and show you what this looks like and then we'll go into formative assessment. So in my Seesaw account, I'm gonna go into my library and just show you, like if I open up the Seesaw Essentials. So you can click on any lesson you want in the Seesaw library and you're gonna see this new button here called present to class. So therefore, all you have to do, if, if you hit present to class, a video will pop up on the first page. You can play that video whole group. And then on the second page, you will see there's discussion questions you can ask and build that community with um, before playing that game. So that's a really cool feature and you can just present it to the entire class. Um, all right, I will give time to explore later. We will now go into formative assessment. So, Teachers can quickly gauge student understanding by adding auto-graded questions to any Seesaw assignment through formative assessments. So with the power of Seesaw's multimodal tools, 
teachers really gain those deeper insights into student learning to target, support, and guide instruction. Plus, teachers can find engaging ready-to-assign lessons with new formative assessment questions in the Seesaw Library. If you have not checked this out yet, I highly recommend. It's awesome. So let's start with finding ready-to-go formative assessments in the Seesaw Library to give you inspiration and save you time. So in the Seesaw Library, you will find the Formative Assessments Inspiration Collection that covers a variety of subject areas. So we have math, language arts, and community building on there. With these formative assessments, teachers can select between practice mode and assessment mode when assigning or creating a formative assessment. So the first one, practice mode, students can actually go in and check their work while they're completing it and receive hints in real time, really helping them validate if they're on the right track while working independently. And then if they're in assessment mode, students do not see immediate feedback. So their responses are recorded and then displayed for the teacher to view. Teachers also have the option to create a formative assessment in Seesaw. So simply tap the green add button and then you can tap on create activity or assessment. This will up, open up a new blank activity template for you to actually begin creating your assessment. So within the question and response model, teachers can then customize possible questions such as multiple choice, true, false, and polls in a standard drag and drop style. And then with formative assessment reporting, teachers can do multiple things. So you can view students grouped by correct, incorrect, and no response. Um, you can check the number of attempts a student made to get the correct answer. You can um, uncover misconceptions by clicking into the student responses. You can view scores and understand progress across multiple assignments. So now I'm gonna give you all some time, but I'll go into my demo account and show you where to find these formative assessments that are already created in the Seesaw Library. And then I'll give you all some time to go in and either look at those that present to class feature I talked about first and check out the formative assessment um, collection that we have. So let me go in and show you where to find this. So again, if I'm in my Seesaw journal, I can click the green add button and then I want to assign an activity because I want to find these already created formative assessments for me. They're right here in this first tile, formative assessment inspiration. And then you'll see we have a ton of lessons here. So we have a bunch of math lessons, language arts lessons, and then building, sorry, community building polls as well. So for example, let's say I'll show you the two different um, assessment types. Let's say I want to do a shape sort. If I'm in practice mode, again, I'm going to hit that present to class tool. This is super fun. I highly suggest going in and playing around with these formative assessments. So if I'm in practice mode, I'm going to be able to see if I have the right answer or not. So shapes with exactly four sides. So I might choose, okay, let's choose my shapes. Um, and then um, maybe I want to throw in that triangle to check my work. Ooh, too many. That means I need to take one out. Oh, that one has three sides. Check my work. Correct. So again, it allows students to go in and get that immediate feedback. Um, let me show you another one. If they were in assessment mode, let's go down to language arts. Um, 
here's one for, let's see. So for reading comprehension, so for the upper grades, they're going to read a passage and then answer questions about the passage. Since this is an assessment mode, if they're gonna click one of the answers, they're not gonna get the option to check their work. This will then be um, reported to the teacher and they'll be able to go in and then check the work um, and view this student score. So there's a bunch of different lessons that we have in this library. So I'm gonna give you all time right now. I will give about, let's see what time it is. I will give five minutes if you all wanna hop into your Seesaw account, check out these lessons. Um, if some really stick out to you, you can also, that you wanna share with your teachers, like I really liked this 3D shapes one, I saved it so it's in my library now. So I highly suggest going in, check out some lessons, ones that you think your teachers will love or you wanna use in your own class, save it to your library so you can go back to it and find it super easily. All right, I'm going to set my timer for five minutes. If you have questions, I'll just be right here. Also, if you have questions, you can come off mute or you can type them in the chat. I'm happy to help.
All right. So that was about five minutes. So we'll go ahead and move on to the next topic, which we've added a lot to. So the Seesaw Library, let's dive in to the new collections in the Seesaw Library. Um, the Seesaw Library contains comprehensive topics for all elementary grades. So it's filled with those high quality, ready to go and ready to assign content designed by our instructional experts. So let's start with our new Creating Classroom Culture collection that contains lessons that foster a positive classroom culture that really values teamwork, understanding, and inclusivity. So this collection contains collaborative protocols, icebreakers, activities, and games. The majority of the lessons in this collection can be used by simply pressing that present to class feature that we talked about earlier. Um, and there are two ways that you can navigate to the resource library. You can tap like I did on that the green add button and then tap assign an activity that will take you to the library. Or you can get to the Seesaw Library directly by clicking the library button at the top of your teacher account. So once you're in the Seesaw Library tab, because again, there's four different libraries um, in the library. So you have to make sure you're under the Seesaw Library tab. You will click on the Seesaw Essentials tile to find this new collection. And then you'll scroll to find Creating Classroom Culture collection. And that is filled with these ready to go lessons that all you have to do is tap view. Once you find a lesson that you want to try, just tap on the present to class button in order to display the activity for the entire class. The present to class allows you and the students to really have full access to all the creative tools. So you're able to interact with the lessons just like the students would if they were doing it on their own. Um, so let's see, this activity is found. I can go show you here. So if I'm already in back here. If I click the Seesaw Library, I wanna make sure I'm under the Seesaw Library. I'm going to go to the Seesaw Essentials tile and I'm going to scroll down to creating classroom culture. So these are awesome to use in morning meeting, maybe after lunch. Um, they have a lot of different collections, community icebreakers and games that would be awesome to use in morning meeting. So for example, like this guess who game like we talked about in the present to class feature, it's gonna start with a video that you're just obviously will have up in front of the whole class. You'll play the video. I'll just show a snippet. We are going to show you how to play Guess Who. This is a fun way to get to know your classmates' voices and practice your listening skills. Everyone who is playing should sit in a circle. Uh, let's pretend we're sitting in a circle with our entire class. The teacher will point to one student and choose who's it. The person who's it will move to the middle and cover their eyes. Like this. The teacher will point to one student in the middle. That student. So what I really like about these activities are it's real kids giving the instructions, which I think is so valuable and what kids don't want to learn from other kids. So that's really helpful. And then again, on slide two, you have those discussion questions that you can go through with your class before playing the activity or game. Um, so this is in, again, the Seesaw Library, that Creating Classroom Culture Collection. There's a ton of lessons in here that you can explore. Okay, now we are going to move on. Let's go back to Seesaw Tools 101. This is an, another new collection we have in the library. Um, and this collection will allow you and your students to learn how to harness the power of Seesaw's essential learning tools. So you'll tap the Seesaw Essentials tile like we already did to get started. And then in these lessons, 
students in pre-K to five will learn and practice how to use Seesaw's multimodal tools through engaging and purposeful practice. So first the teacher will, again, they can use this present to class or they might wanna just assign the learning module. So students can view the instructional video and watch the Seesaw tool used on the activity in that first video. Then next, the teacher would assign the practice module to students so that they can take what they learned in the video and apply it to the in instructional activity. So you'll see there's a learn and then there's a practice. So they're just saying, you know, you could, you could have students do this independently or you could present to class the learn video and then have them practice. You could actually assign that one to have them go practice independently. And I will show you where to find these. So if you go in the Seesaw Library, Seesaw Essentials, here it is, the Seesaw Tools 101. And you'll see, I'm in all grades, but let's say I'm in kindergarten. These activities are gonna be a lot different, like learning how to use the eraser tool. These activities are going to be a lot different. Let's learn how to use the eraser tool. I can use the eraser tool to erase anything on the canvas. So again, these videos are gonna be a lot different than if I go to the fifth grade eraser tool activity, okay? So we have them by grade level so that you can kind of pick and choose. Maybe students are really, um, they've used Seesaw in the past and they're like, I've got this. Maybe you'll assign them a, a higher level activity. Um, so that's a good option for you to use with students to get familiar with all of the tools, feel comfortable with all of the tools within Seesaw. And then last, the last collection I want to show you all is the Instructional Templates Collection. This is super cool. This captures these pre-K through fifth grade students' independent learning and partner interactions across all subject areas with our open-ended ended instructional templates. And we have templates for a variety of subject areas, including math, ELA, science, social studies, computer science even. So um, for this activity, you'll click on the daily routines tile to get started. And then teachers, again, can use present to class to model how students would complete the practice activity using Seesaw's multimodal tools. Next, teachers would then tap assign for students to complete the template independently or maybe in a small group. Okay. So as you can see, students will complete the activity using a variety of Seesaw's multimodal tools to demonstrate their learning and understanding. Each activity provides students with choice, which increases their effort, engagement, and then their overall performance. So with this, you will find it. Instead of going to Seesaw Essentials, I'm gonna to go to the Daily Routines tile. And these are awesome, especially these daily feelings check-ins. I might have students do this every morning when they walk in. Again, you can, the first grade activities are gonna be different than maybe these fifth grade check-ins. Um, but these are awesome to use and they're templates and they give a lot of choice for the students to show their own feelings. Um, let's go back to one I definitely suggest checking out. I'll give, I'll give you all some explore time is the calendar math. This has a template and it is updated. You won't see all of the months. Oh, maybe you will. October. No. So I know maybe they do have all the months. Oh no, it's going backwards. Yes. So they will upload the months on a rolling basis. So teachers will have these activities. So for upcoming September, they will have the calendar for every single week that they can use um, again as a whole class experience. So calendar math is another great one. Um, and then those instructional templates, like we just talked about, are in here as well. 
So this gives teachers, a, saves teachers a lot of time. Instead of finding something that goes with an activity, they can just go in here and use any of these instructional templates, which are across all different ELA, math, computer science even. So if you want to, I will give some explore time. Yes, we have plenty of time. We're actually early. So I will give five minutes. If you want to hop in to the Seesaw Library, click on the daily routines tile and explore some of these new collections. Again, the daily routines tile and the Seesaw Essentials tile. And I'll give maybe four minutes for you to hop in and explore some of those lessons since there's a lot there. Again, if any questions come up while you all are exploring, I'm here, I'm, I'm able to help, so ask away. All right, it's been five minutes on my end. So um, let's go ahead and move on to our last two sections. So
So student groups, the next exciting update is the ability to create student groups in Seesaw. So teachers can now create preset student groups within their classes to differentiate instruction for students with similar needs, ensuring every student receives the right level of support. I totally wish that I had this when I was teaching, especially during those reading centers and math centers where I could easily assign specific assign assignments to specific groups. So this will save teachers a lot of time. Um, let's see here. So you can set up group access through your class settings by tapping on that wrench icon. And then under the student section, you'll tap manage student groups. And then from here, you just enter a group name, edit a group's icon and delete the student group. So I can show you what this looks like in real time. So you're gonna log into your journal. You're going to click on the wrench icon in the upper right hand corner. And then under students, you would just click manage student groups. And I might want to add a student group if I have um, math centers. Um, let's say I have different colored groups for each um, group of kids. I might say my blue math team. I would add student group. I could click whichever kids I want in that group. And then I can edit the icon. So since it's the blue team, I might click the blue whale. And then boom, there's my student group, blue math team right there. You can then go in and edit these groups. You can delete the group. You can edit the name, edit the icon. Also, I know groups are ever changing. Um, within the classroom so you can edit the students in the group as well, super easy. So that's an updated feature. Um, and then the assigned flow. So now that you have your group set up, let's learn how the new activity assigned flow makes it easier for teachers to really plan ahead, differentiate and stay organized. So to assign a lesson, you'll tap assign on any of the practice activities to assign to students so that they can practice on key foundational skills using our Seesaw tools. And then right there, you'll see teachers can assign content directly to student groups for that easy differentiation by tapping edit students and groups right here. Um, teachers also have the options to select the date and time to share the activity with students, holding students accountable now with due dates, which again, I wish I had when I was teaching, that would be very helpful. And then for our final topic, let's talk about a couple of new message updates, including the ability for teachers and administrators to set office hours and schedule announcements. So here, I'm just going to hop into my account and show you what this looks like. In the top um, left corner of your Seesaw account, you'll click your name. And then from here, you'll click on the, the settings tool. I'm going to click on account settings. You will scroll down to office hours. Is that what I was doing? Oh, wait, this one was first messages. Whoops, I'll get to that in a second. Oh no, this is office hours. Okay, so this is a great new feature where you can actually set office hours and you will not receive any notifications outside of your office hours. So here you can set your office hours. Maybe I only want to receive notifications during school hours to set those boundaries. Maybe I only want 7.30 to 4.30 and I do not want to be bothered on the weekends. So you can set the days and time that work best for you. Once you save your office hours, um, families will be notified. And if they go in and try to send you a message, a banner will pop up that says it'll notify them that it's outside of your office hours. So they will be aware as well and why you are not replying. Um, 
Just a note, when office hours are set, you'll still receive all app notifications, such as you know the push app from Seesaw, the badges, SMS notifications, and email. And then outside of the office hours, you'll, you will not get any notifications from Seesaw. They'll all be muted except for email notifications. And then next, we have another message update, which is scheduling messages, which helps ensure students and families automatically receive important information at the perfect time. So to schedule a message, you'll simply choose the announcement or conversation. You'll type up your message. And then right there, you can schedule it. So you can pick a specific date and time. So maybe I'm on my prep on Tuesday and I need a message to go out to families Friday at three o'clock before dismissal. I'm going to set that all up beforehand, saves teachers times, and they don't have to worry about it. Um, important to note here, you cannot edit a scheduled message until after it sends. So if you need to make a big change, you'll have to go in, delete the message, and then recreate it. And let's see, is there only, let's see. I was gonna say, there's only two of you left. So this is the end of our session. Um, there is explore time, but I thought since there's only two of you left, if you want, if you had any questions about those things, I could answer them now. Other than that, I'll, I'll save time at the end, but you did it. You all learned how to present to class. You learned how to navigate the Seesaw library. Um, you used to learn, sorry, you learned how to navigate the Seesaw library and use the ready to go activities. You learned how to create and differentiate your instruction using student groups. You found ready to go formative assessments right in the Seesaw library. Those were my favorite. And you knew how, know how to set your office hours and schedule out messages. Any questions on that? Number limit to the amount of groups created. Not that I know of. That is a great question though. I don't think so. I will definitely email um, my contact if there is a limit. But as what I know of is there is no limit for the number of groups you can create, which is really helpful. Awesome. I'm glad this has been helpful. Do any of you want to share out which update you are most excited about? I know there are so many. I think formative assessment is my favorite, but I also really love setting office hours. I agree. You're excited about the formative assessments. I challenge you to go in there and create your own formative assessments. It was really fun when I was playing around with it. Definitely formative assessments. So hopefully that helps um, kind of kickstart the year with formative assessments and all of these new features. And again, if you have any questions, I will be sending all of the slides, the recording, and then um, some other helpful resources. We also, this is a helpful, we have a training site full of PDFs um, to learn more. So we have these quick start PDF guides, we have short training videos, and we have recorded webinars. And we have so much more on this training website. So I highly recommend checking it out for some of that free content. And I would love your feedback. We are open and appreciate your feedback. So if you don't mind, completing this brief survey, we are always looking for ways to continue to improve and cater our professional learning sessions to meet all of your needs. If it asks for the session name, this is called What's New in Seesaw. And that is all from me. I know we ended a little bit early. So again, if you have any questions, I can stick on for a little while, but other than that, we covered everything. Thank you all for your time as well. I really enjoyed this. Awesome, well, have a great rest of your night, everyone.